and you will answer the questions on the round table. And we started to speak about blockchain with uh, when the Postgres uh, database management system is used on one C. Just try in the f in in this concept to organize a blockchain for audit, for a test, but it's not so easy to make it under the result your theory. But he is the guy who gets rid of the problems. Now I will try to speak, speak about Dmitry. In the one C world, in InfoStart community, there is the the Vyacheslav's beliefs that come Oh, so it is a low diagram here, low direction diagram. Let me try for the another time. After you will write down your own uh, database management system. So if you are using MS SQL, it will degrade in five years. It can save you, but Postgres. Uh, will not deal with uh, your mistakes and after you will write down your ideal system for blockchain for the end interpreter for 1c and I've seen also this at InfoStart we have different uh, configurations from of 1c and at the end you will google and you will find uh, Postgres Pro and Gilev team and Dima Gilev will start his own presentation for how much time do we have two minutes so i will try to stay creative in one c world we want to show all the problems the first thing is that when the architect knows only one c and when you are working with MS SQL, to, to not to write uh, something on Python or on a high-level solution, you just uh, make your own solution, then you choose Postgres, and Postgres will not uh, handle your mistakes. And this is the problem of productivity. And now you think that you are uh, on the productive side, you will ask for Dmitry, and Dmitry will uh, show you some tricks, and you will be saved. But this is not the case. When you listen to us until the end, you will understand the set of measures that will help you to avoid the uh, lacks in uh, architecture of infrastructure in 1C plus Postgres or plus Linux. Do you hear me? Yes. Greetings, dear colleagues. We have uh, some technical problem, but still we can work now. And when we pass from the theory, we can go to the real practice. Now you will see the meat on the bones. And you can upload to him. I will look into my notes and I have so much material. And my name is Dmitry Uchtimovsky. I represent the Gilev RU team. And every year we are making up to 100 different projects uh, related to productivity, to the quality of operations on 1C uh, uh, systems, also with use of Postgres. And I personally also work with uh, uh, different uh, Postgres SQL systems and uh, read courses for young specialists. Every year we are making up to 100 projects, perhaps more. And this provides us with uh, a huge amount of critical information to think about. So, this is the next slide. Yeah. How can you persuade your accounting service to buy a new server? I will try to work with Postgres, uh, to speak about work with Postgres in not a classical way. Uh, my 
presentation has two parts. In the first part, I will speak about the external factors that affect my work, and the second part relates to the testing. So, there is a classical task that you will see in every growing company. How do you affect people who give you money when you need to buy a new server? Please raise your hands if you had experienced this task. And who managed to make this? So, did you make it by yourself for your own money? <laughs> what are the what are the reasons that you translate to your CEOs? The rate, the velocity. What about the money? I think uh, the managers think about money, and when you start to speak about technical details, they are not listening to this. You are just opening your mouth and you are not hurt. But if you say money, everybody is then interested. Unfortunately, we can see that business is not interested in electric power saving, tasks consolidation, larger performance, bad quality of old servers, ROE, that is return on investments, and you know, there is this unpleasant factor that they do it only when something very unpleasant has already happened. We have two assistants here. Uh, when we have to implement something new and the old hardware cannot work for it, so we have to buy new hardware. And the most popular option is when the current hardware does not cope with the load. So we have done everything we could. As we have accumulated statistics from hundreds of projects, many of them are related to virtualization and according to our observations, the performance of server systems related to 1C, Postgres and SQL will not be speeded up through virtualization, but you can decrease it easily. For example, we have an information system. Here you can see observation statistics. We have an information system where financial specialists work. 1C works on Postgres. All of this works in a good or in a bad way. And when problems occur, and normally problems occur in most critical moments, for example, half an hour before tax office closes on the last day when reports can be provided who is to blame IT specialists of course why they didn't manage to do their work we asked them to speed up this procedure and they say they couldn't do anything because hardware could not cope with it in the presentation I wanted to show you how to set performance but as Mayakovsky wrote a child came to his father and asked what is good and what is bad. So for you to understand the way performance should be set, you are to understand the way it should not be set. And in this case, I would like to show you two examples. When performance of virtual system that works on 1C plus progress can be decreased essentially. So these cases were not made up by me. They were accumulated on the basis of statistics of observations. And these cases are confirmed every day. We receive customers that say that something works badly. And maybe it works badly because you should put two different ticks in the settings. We change two ticks and performance improves. There are a lot of such cases. And Having seen this example, you may think that if the management does not want to listen to you, if it thinks that you are specialists and you can cope with it, you can worsen the performance temporarily for the management to understand how bad the system works and maybe in that case they will provide you with the money for new hardware. Now let's watch a short video. 
I hope it will be switched on. Here we can see one C system deployed on Postgres. Actually, you cannot see it well, but we are showing you that this is Postgres. So it is deployed in virtual system. And the settings were done badly. Low settings of electric power supply processors. Here you can see a limit in megahertz, so the performance of processor is decreased, the memory is decreased, and disks have limitations on payoffs. This is an artificial example, but it is based on live observations. Here we have a typical account in three documents will be processed. Let's see what will happen. Three documents are processed for one second and a half. I hope you can see it from the back rows. And the customer is not satisfied. We come here and start checking it. We go to virtual system settings and we can see all these things done by the previous administrators. It was found out that processors were not to be cut. A limit should not have been set. So we improve everything, we increase priority and set affinity. We say that this virtual machine should work on specific cores. We lift the ops limit and set a high priority. Sorry? So we set it. Virtual system is a part of house machine. Similar task, three documents are to be processed. And we find out that on the similar hardware, on the similar software, these documents can be processed six times faster. Only because these limitations were lifted. Of course, if a task is very important, we are to provide maximum part of service resources for it. But even if one C task is one of many tasks on this server, but performance of one C is important, you should provide some part of service resources. It should be guaranteed so that the server will not have to fight for some small portions of performance. So this was about one virtual system. Let's look at the second case. It shows you the situation when there are more than one virtual system. So the main one has no resource limitations. And here is the second virtual system. We try to imitate high processor load. It can be any task. DBMS virtual system is located here. We can see high load in a neighboring virtual system. On this virtual system, processor load is almost zero and if administrator sees this virtual system only, they will conclude that processors are not loaded. We return here and see that the load is still present. Now let's type process these three documents. We press the button and it takes half of a second till 1.3 seconds for document processing. So that's much worse than there is no unnecessary load. Virtualization can decrease this the performance of connection between 1C and DBMS. Of course, it happens when the load of hardware or software is too high and the server has to fight for some portions of performance if you have not allocated processor cores, disk performance or memory resources. The server starts fighting for performance and 1C performance loses in this fight. Virtual system settings. To, well, mostly it happens on peak moments of load. What is a peak moment of load? When half an hour remains till the last report can be provided, or if this is the peak of sales. 
you ought to receive money, but the money is not received. Why? Because administrator decided that that one C service is not a really important task compared to other virtual machines in the same system. People that learn about our forum and our book for the first time can ask us the following question. Why don't you like virtualization? We like virtualization. We appreciate it. We brought a license for it. And we use virtual systems for terminal and host accesses for trainings, for secondary task servers, but all important productive servers or hardware servers. And we cannot combine critical loads on one and the same machine so that we will not be faced with a situation that one customer sends us a lot of lines in one of these servers and this load is twice time higher than the load of other clients. And even if this load is received, all the important services should not suffer from it. So if we have a server that is engaged in pleading or blocking, analyzing, there should be no unnecessary load due to it. If we bought one powerful server and downloaded a lot of virtual machines on it, this unnecessary load could have been very high, so you should not do virtualization for the sake of virtualization. You need to understand what can become virtual and what should remain on a physical machine or what can be virtualized in a very careful way. So we provide for cores, memory and disks, and these disks should not combine any other tasks. If we speak about the systems of our, our customers, I'd like to mention that every year we have more and more projects with virtualization and fewer and fewer projects with physical machines. Of course, they are present, but the speed of virtual systems development is very high. Virtualization is fashionable, but you should be careful when, when you do it. If we're interested in performance, we can find out that performance and virtualization do not always walk hand in hand. So what, what about our opinion regarding virtualization? Here you can see our Facebook page, where you can see that we liked it. It means that we like virtualization. This was the first part of my presentation regarding virtualization setting. The second part, the issue of testing DBMS performance. Many public performance tests on the Internet, these can be performance of hardware or software, can be represented by this diagram. We have functionality, performance, user experience, and our tests are not related to it at all. So we test our opinion about good things. Well, that is interesting. But some people may try to test the system when in various IT regions the conditions of fulfillment are different. For example, you use a physical cloud, Amazon, or something else, and your terms are not constant. One and the same task should be fulfilled 10 times, and every time some conditions are different. Some people test it without a specific goal. For example, people like the process of it. In that case, the result will be quite enigmatic. Some people want the test to match the result they need, so they want to promote the product. Now, our team will try to entertain you a little bit. Well, actually, we have a circus acro across the road where you can see jugglery. So what tricks can be done when performance is tested? We have a system, one physical 1C server. These will be one and the same server, it will be a physical server and two virtual machines. Postgres DBMS and MS SQL DBMS. One and the same copy of typical accounting system is deployed. We have 20 gigabytes tables there. These two bases are loaded from one and the same data center when we fulfill some operation, it should be conducted in a similar way. That is important. 
hardware is one and the same, the server is one and the same, and the base is one and the same. Only DBMS are different. In the upper part, we can see Postgres, and in the lower part, MSSQL. We will fulfill similar operations and look at the time of their fulfillment. These operations will be shot on Postgres. For example, payroll accumulation is done slower compared to MSQL. Implementation is conducted slower compared to MSQL. And the document for additional expenditures is processed in a slower way compared to MSSQL. So it seems to us that Postgres has lost in this competition. Well, yes, in these three operations, SQL has won and Postgres has lost. So we can make some conclusions, but actually it's too early to make any conclusions. This system was found by a different team that has a different task. They want to make sure that Postgres will win. So this team takes three other operations from these databases. In the upper part you can see Postgres, in the lower part SQL. We prepare a good code of these operations are typical for accounting. A good code. Good goods code goes much faster on Postgres. Filling in the document on payroll is done much faster and the document on goods on incoming goods is processed much faster on Postgres. So Postgres has won in this competition. This comparison was done with the same equipment and the same base. So you take similar input data and receive very different results. You can explain them the way you wish. So this was a trick. Regularly, when some load tests were conducted, we saw the following situation. A limited number of operations is taken. These operations do not represent a complete scheme of an enterprise functioning. They do not represent all critical, important operations done by the enterprise. Some part of these operations is taken that should be profitable for the testing. A conclusion is made and in that case you can give your customer an invoice to sign. So this can be quite tricky, especially if the people that conducted testing actually had a task to influence the results or to make the results match the conclusion they need. But we're speaking about real world. If you say that you're in migration of base from SQL to Postgres, your performance has worsened. It's not because Postgres is worse. You should find out what has happened, why it happened. So when the results of tests are demonstrated, you should not look at the things that were shown to you. Look at the things that were not shown. Who conducted the test? If the test is conducted for vendor's money, then the result will be the one that is profitable for the vendor. The test may be not representative. For example, we selected 10 operations, selected three of them that are profitable for us and decided to test them. So what should we do? We include debugger measurement in these documents and we see that some operations are different. For example, one query on Postgres is slower than on MSSQL. We need to understand that the equipment may also have some delays and after that we try to understand why we have this difference. For example, if it is interesting for you to conduct such studies, you need to understand that on a typical accounting demo base, tables are small. Your problems will not be represented. If you want to know the way your test system will behave in real condition, try to imagine the volume to which your base can grow within the next year. So if you think that it will grow by one terabyte, you ought to increase your table by that volume, because you know when your table is increased, your performance will be much different.
Our base includes 20 gigabytes. Its size should match the size of tables of regular customers. This is a live base that contains data for three years. For example, goods sale. This document is processed much slower on Postgres because a specific query is conducted slower. So what do we do? We conduct a detailed analysis. Query TG. This is a very good service that takes data from technological log. The results are readable and if you are interested you can use this Google uh, link for the discussion uh, of uh, productivity at Facebook with Bezislav and his colleagues from Postgres Pro you can join the discussion. So this is the query. When what happened with this with query with uh, in terms of 1C and uh, uh, DBMS? First, if you want to use a specialized tool it has an, it is unreadable and to work with this even for a specialist you will use too much time one of the burdens is uh, the uh, receiving of the information on rests out of the registry of uh, uh, of your accounting service there are registers of uh, of summing up and uh, the whole, whole country uses it we cannot discuss this approach and we found two significantly great scans of tables and queries out from the register of uh, of the accounting office. I think the ac accumulator in the clicker is not working well. So, because this is Postgres, we were using the prior tool and we could preload two tables in cache and we could win up productivity and this solution helped us to solve uh, the this task it should be a part of an operative memory but still it not it's working well, very well although it can be one of examples uh, on how to boost your productivity but still you need to use the differential diagnosis and then MSSQL server here we have a different situation it's more complicated because we are on a Postgres conference. It could, we could also sli li uh, easily say that this is because Postgres is better. But still, I want you to remain professionals. And here, we don't need to think that we uh, receive me measurements and the task is over. So we have a difference and we need to receive the understanding why do we have this difference and how can we cut this difference uh, down if the result of uh, the test was uh, not uh, for scientific work but rather practical work so what do we see here search here for so on the school here we have a package with a huge table and we try to to create the plan of a query on the screen and here red are the tables that we are taking data uh, from and this this plan as you see is very complex it has many temporary tables and the general text of a query takes more than 2,000 strings on the language of 1C and the problem of its optimization is that it has many business terms inside of it so a clear programmer without understanding of the specifics of work of the algorithm then this is the algorithm of loans and compensations it can it cannot be used but uh, the accounting specialists can also don't understand this uh, con type configuration. So, if the query goes until is executed until the creation of SQL text, it has tens of sub queries for its creation of so much temporary tables. So, temporary ta tables per se are very popular. It's a very popular means at one seam. But I would rather not recommend to play with them for so long. 
it is the tool when you take only one part of a table for optimization if you will use this table or part of the table f many times but if you will choose tables as a whole this means that you are making something wrong and we wanted to show what is the contents of this temporary table because this temporary table has uh, so many internal uh, sub queries these are all internal tables that are part of one internal table upon a query this is a very huge and very complex scheme it's so historically built for a maximum universal service for this task but if your database is not so huge this doesn't have any sense. Perhaps it could have sense when we make, when we would make our own configuration and when we receive data, when we have up to 10,000s of uh, uh, strings, we could make, uh, we could avoid creation of a cascade of temporary tables, because this is a very huge load. Although, the temporary tables are not helping, but there are many calculating fields inside of them, and the planner has uh, faces a task that is impossible to make because you need to, uh, to execute this task for a short period of time and there are some havings and you are just not thinking about indexes when you are working with having what is the uh, the result the outcome in the outcome, we understand that the temporary tables per se can be uh, very useful. They can seriously cut down your operating time in Postgres also, because there was a left conjunction to the virtual uh, tables, and uh, temporary tables would help for Postgres. But when there are too many temporary tables, they are not operable. But if you have not so much data, you're, you're not cutting down your productivity. And in the end, several years ago, we have run some tests and Postgres was not the winner in them. You can say that dur during these last years, optimizer of one C together with Postgres or Postgres uh, itself, got smarter and Postgres for one C grows and is developed, is well developed for now we think this is a very mature DBMS and you can easily use it. Further, we tried to extend the version for uh, DBMS MS SQL. We migrated the MDB for RAM disk and we could then uh, spare on uh, many temporary tables and the difference was at this minimum and many operations were executed at the same time the equal time for Postgres and SQL. SQL can work in some operations at a higher speed when we use shared memory when shared memory lives uh, with the other types of memory inside of uh, the MSQL and this is a win-win situation if you work on both virtual machines on one host and if you compare one virtual machine with the other one with MSQL and SQL the first type of the machine will uh, have a, will have a bigger speed so you have two minutes more so we've managed to pick up the operations with uh, differences in productivity, but when, when there were small differences, we would not show them. It is very important to say that in the last quarter of 2018, our team faced a record of communications with clients who use Postgres with 1C. Of course, we had such clients before, but now we have uh, so much of them. Therefore, we were forced to build up uh, additional resources and we are now preparing a course for increase of productivity of Postgres, work of Postgres inside of a virtual machine. And another important point relates to the tests. Why do we make tests of a productivity? So we are not making tests 
just for tests. We have a real task. Imagine we have a enterprise solution and uh, how can we save money on it because Postgres is not for free. So distribution is for free but you will still uh, need to pay for Postgres. But there is also a vanilla Postgres on Postgres Pro and on uh, 1C it's uh, free. And at the test you can think uh, whether the free Postgres will uh, cope with the load. But perhaps it's possible. And uh, we can just uh, think of the optimization of queries and uh, be it make it as a part of the test. So imagine the SQL server license costs 20 million rubles and Postgres Plus license will cost 10 million rubles, uh, rubles just for your understanding. And at the normal testing, you will be interested in the second uh, in the second scenario, whether Postgres can cope with it, and how long will we need to work with Postgres, and will we need some help from further in our findings and research. So for the beginners, because many of our clients are used to work with Windows and many programmers work with Windows and uh, if they work uh, with SQL on uh, out of the box it's uneasy so we have a virtual network and this Postgres Pro is uh, on our virtual network perhaps it's not prohibited you can just try to make it uh, to download it and to, to make it try just, just give it a try and Postgres, as a base, is more complex than SQL. You can use SQL out of the box, so you can set up four parameters, and in 95% of cases it will work. There are many uh, uh, works for Postgres uh, at a startup, and it's not easy to fight for productivity in Postgres. Although it's easy to work with Postgres and starting from this year we are launching our courses. You can uh, read uh, the information on our website gilev.ru. I think I'm out of time right now and here I will be um, Yeah, I will be on the round table. I, I, will, I want to visit the round table unfortunately, so I will stay for you yeah, It's it's very interesting what you will say about dockers of Postgres. I think you love it. You do love it. I would rather say that on my machine, Docker did not work because I, I used virtual wo bo box. So it's just a holy war here. But I think now we are having coffee break. Do I? really understand that the temporary tab tables uh, on uh, Postgres have a better speed. I, but here on this example it was like this, but perhaps this is just a coincidence. For other scenarios it cannot be the case. Thank you very much, Dima. But I want to, to point out one extension. PG pre-war. It will be many extensions today. It's hypo PG in the next room, in the next hall. But let's try to have a coffee break and then later we will meet Sergey Andreev, the guy who can uh, recollect Postgres.